right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Paige Clark. I am the Canadian sales agent for Harmonica Canada, and I run my own egg center in Niagara Falls. And I'm here today with two very special guests, one you might recognize right away, uh, Gail Lynn, inventor of the Harmonic Egg. And today with us, we have very special guest, Dr. Dominique Sorel, to speak to us about a lot of the properties of the egg, a lot of the deep dive stuff that went into the creation of the egg, um, working with, you know, all of those fields of energy that the egg is, is co-creating with. So I just want to start by saying, welcome, ladies. <laughs> Thank you for being here and spending some time with us. Um, Gail and Dominique have collaborated deeply in the past, um, especially during the egg's inception, um, and Gail working on her book, of course. Um, but I want to just give a little bit of backdrop to Dr. Dominique. Um, because her her stats here, I have her bio in front of me, are just wow. Uh, but I'll just give you a little glimpse and we'll put the rest of her bio uh, wherever this interview is posted so you can read the full description of all of her life's work. Um, but uh, Dr. Dominique is a noetic scholar, a retired dean of faculty and professor at Energy Medicine University in California. And she is often invited to speak uh, as a lecturer and conduct training worldwide about the human potential. And this is amazing topics include controlled remote viewing, intuitive intelligence, and radiesthesia. Wow, incredible. Um, I, before we kind of get rolling with this, these questions that we have, ladies, um, I'd just like to throw this to Gail. Um, Gail, what is sort of the intention today that we want to give everyone, all the listeners, the viewers, from today's interview. Oh, thank you, Paige. Um, I think we just want to educate the public here. Uh, there's so many modalities that are going to be coming out, uh, non-invasive, sound and light therapies. And over the years, I've had many questions from my clients where they're asking, you know, do you know this modality? Do you, do you know that modality? Well, I won't know every modality, but I just want to give them a baseline of what they should be looking for when they choose to put their body into something or with something or with someone that they're being discerning that they're looking at did they do their research will this harm me in any way um what was the intention behind it what is the energy of the company and the integrity of the company if this resonates with you great if it doesn't it's okay there is no one size fits all i just want to make sure that everybody understands that Dominique and I have been working together for many, many years, and I respect her so much. She's the type of person that if she knows that you want to take a class from her and she feels you won't use the information for the highest and best, she won't even take you on as a student. This is her integrity. This is how brilliant and wonderful and above board she is. So when you see the egg and when you experience the egg, know that there is intention for every single piece of the egg, every screw, every uh, dimension, the lights, the chair, the music, the deep dive we did on the music for the people, the clients to listen to of a high integrity, high vibing musician to make sure that this does no harm. So the intention for this is to educate people and let them know that these are the things they should be looking for before they try any kind of modality. And so thank you for asking that because I think it's just really important um, that people know that. Yeah, it's important to set the tone for today because we're going to get into some really interesting aspects, even some things that, you know, we want to be, be steering clear of, uh, to be respectful of when we're working with this intensity of energy work. Um, so it's really valuable information for today's conversation. So why don't we start, uh, Dominique, if you wouldn't mind talking about, um, if you could explain us to us the non-local field and its connection to the egg. Okay, so the non-local field, where do we begin? <laughs> well, the scientific um, you know, definition of it is, it's a, a realm whereby there is no um, distance, there is no time, and where particles um, can 
can communicate instantaneously, okay? However, there is no message sent or received. It's just instantaneous connection, okay? So that's the um, scientific sort of definition of the non-local realm in a nutshell. Um, Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. And I always loved that term. I think if Einstein had lived longer, he would have, you know, explained the non-local in a lot more um, detail. There's been a, a, a few, there's some excellent um, examples of what happens in the non-local. Um, for example, um, INSCOM, the government INSCOM, did an experiment many years ago whereby they took a person, uh, let's say person A, and took some white cells out of their cheeks. And they put those cells in a tube and in a centrifuge and with a sensor in it. And they, the person was in one room watching videos while the test tube with his cells, it was a man, was in another room. So every time um, the person was shown something violent out of nowhere, he would have a reaction. And what they found was that every time he jumped or had a, you know, a nervous reaction, his cells responded. So then they tried it, you know, uh, 50 miles away and it still happened. Then they replicated the experiment and waited for two days. They put the cells in a test tube, waited for two days, repeated the whole thing, and the cells still responded to his reactions. Okay, so this is the type of realm we're talking about. It's called probably the, the quantum realm. Okay. And so um, your question was, you know, what is the non-local field and the connection to the egg? Well, um, the egg's healing um, oper operative system or whatever actually um, operates in that non-local non -local realm, okay? So it, it emanates, certain uh, wavelengths to heal and the person interacts, the person's energy field interacts with whatever, you know, the egg uh, emanates. So it emanates through its shape, it emanates through the music, through the light, and then it sort of um, interacts with the person's own uh, energetic field. So I don't know if that answers um, your question. No. The, the only other thing I wanted, sorry, the only other thing I wanted to add is in um, the world of radiesthesia and um, hermetics, it actually goes back to so above, as below, or as above, so below. And, you know, there have been a few um, meanings derived from that. But for me, it means that there is that other non-local realm, that quantum field, but it's different because there is no time and there is no distance. It's just immediate connection. There are no signals um, sent. So that's why it's very difficult to understand. So uh, when Dominique and I were talking about how the egg works, so we're giving off some kind of an energy, some kind of a frequency. And when we enter into the egg, the egg starts to uh, interact and, and play with that and say, oh my gosh, there's an imbalance in this field. So there's the egg field and then there's the human field. And so they interact together and the egg is looking for the imbalances to help um, in a, at a quantum level to repair that. So I'll let Dominique expand on that and how it interacts with the holographic field and in the, the non-local realm and the quantum energy healing that it does. Yes. Well, as you know, everyone has a unique, um, it's like a um, thumbprint, you know, everybody has unique fingerprints and thumbprints. We also have a unique um, energetic field. 
And therefore, when we enter into the egg, we emanate our field with all of its, you know, healthy aspects and unhealthy aspects. And what the egg does, it's sort of, um, you know, there's a meeting point in like an interaction sort of level where the egg will, first of all, it appears, it's really interesting that the egg sort of assesses the human field that is coming out of the person. And because it's programmed to, um, to heal, it sort of finds um, the weak aspects of the human field and, and interacts with it. It's, it's not easy um, to explain because it happens in the quantum level, but it's very powerful. It's extreme. What happens in the non-local field is extremely powerful um, because there is no distance. It's, it's immediate um, connection and it does its job immediately. And so when we have the, the sound and the light and the vibration and the sacred geometric patterns and the consciousness of you know, really downloading what Edgar Casey says about sound and light in Tesla and Royal Rife with frequencies. And we use that, that small cubic airspace and the scalar waves and the, the body's uh, toroidal field. Then when you look at another modality and we love every modality, we would never say anything negative about a modality because if it works for you, it works for you. But when we have that cubic airspace, the scalar waves are much more powerful when you have it in that contained cubic airspace of the harmonic egg with the sacred geometry versus it just dissipating out into the ether of a room or with a, a group of people and who knows where the energies that are being released are going to land, which person is it going to land on? So I'll let Dominique kind of take that from there. Absolutely. I mean, for me, it's so obvious that, you know, um, the containment of the um, modality of healing is, um, you know, it's critical. Um, not only is it critical, but the shape of the containment is also um, critical. Um, because as you say, you know, if not, it's just going to go you know, into, into space and not do anything. So, and because, um, you know, the shape of the egg itself is healing by its own nature so that it, it, you know, the person's, um, energy field will reverberate into the egg. And then by, you know, the way it reverberates. And as you, um, said, you know, the torsion waves are, you know, are happening because of the photons and all that. But that's another conversation. But yes, you know, this is what's happening. And it's it's a fact that the shape of the containment area is a neg that makes it so powerful. Also, don't forget that there's nothing from the outside that can penetrate through the egg and sort of pollute the whole process of healing. Um, if you were to do the same thing in a big room or something, it wouldn't have the same effect, if any effect at all, because, you know, the music, the, um, the lighting, everything, it would bounce off, you know, just anything that's in the room. And if somebody else is in the room, then, you know, that perturbs um, the whole process. So the uniqueness of the egg is that it is contained and it is in a shape of, you know, sacred geometry and uh, an egg, which is, you know, a natural shape. And so it's extremely, uh, the process becomes extremely powerful. And also because it is contained, as the person's uh, energy field is healing, the egg will adjust, you know, it's waves because it's the human is beginning to heal. And so it might soften or it might, you know, it will adjust during that whole time. If you do it in an open room, none of that can happen. So that, that was my, one of my next questions. And I think you're, you're starting to get onto that um, of the delivery system truly that this egg is. And my question would be, um, which you started speaking of, is there an intelligence to the egg's efficacy in terms of that field 
knowing, you know, like you were saying, just how much that person can take. It's their first session. Maybe they're, you know, not feeling as open or as comfortable. The egg gives them a gentle experience, right? Then the next time they, they feel like they could have a stronger experience. Um, I know with my clients, every egg session is different. You can never come back and say, oh, it was just like last time because it's always changing because their vibration is always changing. So I guess my question is, is this intelligence here working with the, the person and the human field? And is there any correlation to approaching your session with an openness and a strong intention versus skepticism? You want to take that? Well, let me let me go backwards on uh, what Dominique was saying. We are, I am uh, going to commission Dominique to do some articles on a deeper dive in the science of the scalar waves and the torsion fields and stuff. So that would be a completely different conversation. Um, and we we know that Victor Schauberger, uh, way back in the day, had has said that the egg is one of the most power, powerful shapes in the universe. So I wanted to kind of interject that. And then the fact that we use wood as a material, not metal, not plastic, we get the acoustics, like a beautiful acoustic guitar, a beautiful you know, acoustic instrument um, in a more of a conscious technology. So each egg has its own fingerprint, if you will, because it's made of a living material. So, when we help people set their intention, and it's such a beautiful thing, Dominique has written a beautiful um, excerpt for the training manual on the power of intention and how you know we set an intention. And it's almost like saying a prayer for a client. And when two or more are gathered, we're, we're, in, we're helping them to manifest their intentions in those sessions. So I maybe got, I got off a little bit track, but I wanted to go back and uh, address those points. <laughs> no, those yeah. are important. I just, um, I was reeling when I started to hear Dominique talk about the fact that the, yeah, there is an intelligence happening where the egg is choosing just how much um, to, to apply to the human field, to co-mingle uh, when that person's at a state of readiness or willingness. Um, so maybe if you could continue down that road just a little bit, Dominique, I would love that. Sure, sure. Well, yes. Um, what happens is the egg is continuously like assessing and playing with the uh, person's energetic field. I, I see it almost as the egg conducting, you know, an orchestra of healing uh, frequencies and, you know, continuously, you know, like a maestro, you know, saying a little bit more here, a little bit more there. And the person, because the person is relaxed, the person will more or less surrenders their immunity system, their nervous system and, and everything to interact in this, you know, beautiful, na um, natural way. You know, the healing modality of the egg is, is truly natural, totally natural. There's nothing artificial. There's nothing forced. There's nothing. It's all of nature's different, you know, expressions that are playing together like a, a beautiful piece of, of music. And, and I think that's why, you know, when a person, um, you know, um, at the beginning of the session goes into the egg, they usually, from what I hear, they become even more and more relaxed. And, and interestingly enough, apparently, also lose the sense of time themselves. You have to tell them, okay, you know, your session is over because they truly become at one with the process. And they truly, what does that mean? Uh, they, they connect into the non-local where there is no time, there is no distance, and therefore they're surrendering any resistance their even physical body could have to the treatment. So you see, it, it happens on a very subtle level, but it's um, you know counterbalanced by the huge power that that generates. Amazing, that is. You had asked about people with skepticism, so. I've had 
definitely had um, spouses. One spouse loved it and, and kind of forced the other spouse to come in because they loved it so much. And the spouse would be like, oh, my spouse wanted me to do this, but I doubt it's going to do anything for me. And you see an amazing transformation. You see a change in their energy field, which almost looks like to the a regular a person who's not tuned in with energy is they look younger or they look different. They'll say, you look different. Your face is different. Your, their body language is different. And so you can go in there thinking, oh, this is stupid and nothing's going to happen. And still it's going to work. So it's been really interesting to see that over the years. Um, and I just get a chuckle out of it because you'll see them go in blah, 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 and then they come out and they're like, what happened? What was that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is because it is powerful and it actually, you know, interacts on the physical level, but in the non-local. And I think that's why, you know, people are, are so surprised, even if they don't really believe in it. If they go in and just say, oh, what the heck, I'll just spend, you know, 15 minutes doing nothing. Well, that's it. They're sort of surrendering. And because you don't really feel it unless you're really sensitive you think nothing is happening but it is happening for sure so i will tell you dominique you don't know this but the uh, the peru center put me in for a remote session oh and called in pachamama i believe that's how you say it i literally started to feel a headache an hour before my session started and here i am in a remote session my photo in the egg on the land in peru ended up getting a small you know it's a small headache uh, uh, people that have done the egg will understand this a little bit of a detox and uh, so much energy on the body so ended up an hour before the session so how is that working my session didn't even start yet and i'm feeling the energies and it was a beautiful amazing session where my intention was that i was uh, hoping for the land of Peru to show me, to help me understand what I can do to make the egg even better. I love the land of Peru, just a beautiful place, um, such the divine feminine. So what it, it was amazing session, but remotely crazy. And people have reported, you know, as soon as I made my appointment, I felt like I started detoxing. Yes. Did you know what time it was going to happen? Yes, I knew it was going to be at 10 o'clock in the morning at nine o'clock. I started right. to feel a headache coming on. I didn't even think about it. I just and then I did my session. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it started probably when the technician was starting to get me ready for my session energetically, just like you were talking about with the cells. You know, it doesn't matter where the body is. The non-local realm is the quantum healing, the quantum field. Exactly. And a photo, um, you and I have talked about this a lot. A photo is extremely powerful because it contains the total, um, you know, energetic imprint of that person. And so that's why with an radiesthesie, you know, we can look at a photo and you can know just about everything about that person. And so you place it in the egg and because of the egg's sacred geometry and the intention the it's going to pick up the emanation from the photo and that emanation is unique to that human being and again because it's happening in the um, non-local realm there's no distance there's no signal sending that have to travel it is it instantaneously works with that person's you know energetic field and because we're connected to our own photos it happens immediately it blows my mind as an engineer i can't make it fit in my brain anywhere <laughs> <laughs> and you know that's what i love about working with gail she you know we first started working together a very long time ago and she came to learn controlled remote viewing and i immediately she's one of my favorite students because she is so skeptical and she does want to know how things work and and yeah you know she's very unusual because 
her heart and soul are both open. And so she experiences it. I mean, you know, very powerfully all these things, but then your mind goes, well, you know, I can't quite explain it. But the other thing I also want to say while we're talking about this is that um, one of the major things I was impressed with Gail is that she, you do your homework. And I was so impressed when you started talking to me about um, healing with sound and healing with music. And as you know, I've, I've heard just about everything, especially in that realm. And so, you know, when I asked Gail, well, how much, you know, research have you done? And she like, she had already done like 10 years of research and written papers on it and all that. So that's why, you know, Gail and I work so well together because I also am a skeptic and I un we understand, you know, how our, our brain works and yet we're both open to, you know, that non-local, so. Well, and I, I love uh, collaborating with Dominique because she makes me think of things that I didn't think about. So when we're talking about, oh, can we use plant music in the egg? Oh, okay, well, if they record the plant in the tone of C, what if the plant really is expressing in the tone of Z? And we don't even know. And so then Dominique will say something and I'll say something and we're like, okay, no, that's not going to work. The egg's not going to resonate with the lack of integrity that that music would have for the plant music. And then I said to Dominique one day, I go, what if we do the heartbeat? What if we do a heartbeat in the egg? And uh, she, and I was like, that's not going to be great and this and that. And she's like, no. And I was like, why? And she's like, well, you know, it could be dangerous. And it could be, and I said, do we do it in the dark? And, you know, and, and do we do it without sound, but just light? And we go back and forth and banter. And it is so brilliant to play off each other and do this deep dive on what is safe. Why wouldn't it work? Even I have these brilliant ideas. And then Dominique says, no. And then I say, well, what about this? And it's just so fun to um, be this private investigator that I am and then do the deep dives with Dominique and uh, you know, to create the protocols that are the safest. And when we tested the egg, we said, okay, how many minutes and this was done with doctors and healers. We had 12 people that with the prototype egg to define the protocol. It's 40 minutes of music, 10 minutes of silence. And we've come to the, the point where eight minutes of silence is really ideal. But, you know, sometimes when you get into your silence, you start thinking in the egg, okay, it's my silence and everything. And now I've started my silence. And then at the end of the silence, you're thinking, Okay, it should be over by now. So we wanted to give you a good eight minutes to integrate. Um, but that silence is so important. But what if, Dominique, when we went back and forth, what if they do over an hour? Oh, no, 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 no. You start doing more. More is not better. So we started to figure out, okay, what would happen if they did too much? Well, the body's going to get confused. The body's going to start rejecting this energy. This is not a good thing to do too much. And that's what I've been trying to educate. So I'll pop it back over to Dominique when we had this whole discussion. Uh, yes, absolutely. We continuously, you know, test things, especially, um, you know, some of your operators um, ask you questions. What if we do this? What if we do that? And, um, you know, well, this brings us to, you know, what I wanted to say most of all is that the egg is perfect the way it is, okay? Gail has spent, I don't know how many years researching, you know, sacred geometry, um, music, um, colors, frequencies, and, and how they work together. And, you know, I think you're one of the most educated persons in that field because you spend so much time and, you know, your intention comes from the heart. And so, you know, the egg has been studied. We've tried different alternatives, different, you tried different, um, you know, dimensions, different sounds, different woods, different, you know, and the egg is perfect as it is. It's operating at its maximum, um, you know, at its maximum level. And so, um, you know, some people want, ask if, you know, what if I put a crystal in it 
or what if I put a plan? What if I put, you know, and, and so, you know, um, it is, it's, I guess it's human nature that wants to make things better. But if I have one message that I really want to put up today is leave the egg alone. Okay. It is perfect the way it is. Anything you add to it or want to manipulate is going to make it weak, weaker and unbalanced. And, you know, if, if you're an operator of this egg, I really believe, and I know um, Gail agrees, is that you really have to be a special person. You have to be a special person in terms of how you live your life. You know, you have to live in authenticity and um, ethically, and also have the best intention all the time uh, for your um, clients and for yourself. And, you know, it's a special, it reminds me a little bit of, you know, when you become a radius disease, you have to live your life a certain way, or, you know, you will not be able to develop your skills working in, in the non-local. And I believe as an egg operator, you know, it's almost like a calling and in any journey anybody takes to develop one one's skills in the non-local or even you know being more evolved spiritually the number one rule is be have humility and that's the most important and yet I, when i look around me the most difficult one for people to take in so you have this beautiful egg that has been research by this, you know, special person, Gail, and, and it's operating, you know, beautifully to perfection. And yet some people want to put their crystal in there, or they want to do something else or whatever. And, and it's like, why? What part of it's perfect? Do you like, not? I just remember asking Dominique and I, I used to let people bring their crystals in and you know so they wanted to charge them and everything like that and my ego is not that big where I can't go back and say okay I was wrong I should not have been letting people bring their crystals in because the the frequencies of the crystals is messing with the frequencies of the human field and the egg field so Dominique I asked her why would anybody want to do that <laughs> this is how we talk to each other she's like why <laughs> she's french and i love her and she's just really like blatant you know blatantly like okay this, why would anybody do that and so you know we start talking so now we've changed it so the protocols in in the training manual is always changing because i'll learn something new and my ego is not so big to say oh now that i said that i can't not i can't unsay it or i can't change it i will change it immediately when i get new information or new data easy so i just thought that was funny and so we don't let people bring in their crystals anymore because it does interact with the egg field and the human field and it changes the uh the the dynamics and the power of the egg so it's kind of funny yeah yeah and if i may add it, it is funny and i i spend a lot of time apologizing to gail because she's so sweet and she'll call me up with this question and I'll just like blurt out with passion. Why would you even, you know, and I go on, she's so sweet. And then I go, oh, I'm sorry, Gail. <laughs> but um, no, but I do want to say something about crystals. What people don't realize is that a crystal is an instrument. And of course you realize that that's why, you know, you want to use it, but uh, what's important is that, you know, we are on this planet, we are all humans. And no matter how much you want to cleanse your crystal, you can't cleanse it of your own energy. It's impossible. You know, you can go through all these, you know, whatever the ceremonies people do with their crystals and all that. It's still a physical piece of crystal and you you emanate energy physical energy which is you know part of that is your health whether it's good health bad health what's going on in your liver 
or your thoughts or, or whatever. So you cannot put a crystal in the egg that is either you think is neutral or that you're going to charge it with good intention because, you, you know, it, it means that you're charging it with your human energy. And I'm sorry not to insult anybody, but none of us is 100% pure. And so, you know, you're, no matter how much you try to clean it, it's going to have some human energy. So you can do that, you know, whatever you want outside the egg. But in the egg, you know, you're going to pollute it if you put anything else in it. And that's it. I'll shut up on this now. <laughs> You're so funny. I love you so much. And that's what I love about you is because you will just be like, Gail, what are you thinking? And then it's, it's not an insult to me. To me, I just, I roll with it. I don't take it personally because I know that you come from such a place of love and integrity. And so, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. But you were saying something too about if you're going to learn these gifts and that everybody has the gift of intuition, everybody has the gift of tapping into the non-local um, but if you aren't living your life to the, to the highest and best and the most integrity, I think I had a mentor before that lost his gifts. I watched the gifts go away because he started playing with the dark side, started really manipulating people with his gifts and taking advantage of people with his gifts. And I watched the universe or creator source, God, take those gifts away from him and that was a really eye-opening thing for me. Um, I would never want to manipulate somebody to the point where I wasn't in my own power and would lose my gifts. Yeah, that is very true. I've seen it happen too. And it's even more subtle than that. Um, you don't even have to play with the dark forces for that to happen. Um, if you feel entitled, for example, about knowing something um, about you know working with the non-local, then it, it's going to stop your development. And I see so many people, you know, especially in the new age community, where you know somebody will wake up one morning and say, "Oh, I'm a healer," and you know, pay a lot of money to learn all the techniques and feel that because they decided they want to be a healer, they're going to be a healer. And, you know, that that all comes from um, ego. And um, these people usually don't develop their potential um, because it's all about, you know, it's operating um, through the ego. Humility, you know, I, I've had to learn these lessons myself. We're all humans. And humility is a good place to start to really evolve and just drop the entitlement. Maybe you will be given these skills, maybe you won't, but you have to have the humility to, you know, just surrender to the universe. And then you'll find that your skills start to develop. That's a really good point, also, about the egg is we are taking out that human element in some respects in in that the egg is repeatable you know we can the egg doesn't have a bad day you're not going to let's say another healer that's going to lay their hands on you and the night before they sign divorce papers right <laughs> uh we're, we're not like working with that or wherever they are you know calling themselves a healer working on their own humility right the egg is dependable that way and it's repeatable and it's sort of like, you know, step back and let it do its thing. And, you know, to your own body, get out of your, your own way and let the body do what it is naturally designed to do, which is to take over where there is dis-ease and come back into harmony and come back into balance and work with that field. Um, so I think that's, that's wonderful uh, advice to anyone pursuing the healing arts, uh, especially one starting or, or pursuing now. And maybe they got to take a check in with themselves and see where they're at. Um, I did want to ask a little bit about this field and sort of um, if, if from a quantum level, you can even um, uh, put this into physicality. What, what, how large does this egg's energy emanate? How large is this field? Is it self-contained? Is there a field within the egg or does it go 
pass the actual physical size of the egg into, you know, wherever it's located. Um, I'll just quickly say something and then I'll let Gail um, take over. So um, the egg has two fields. Um, there's the internal inside field of energy, which is the healing uh, modality. But then because of its physicality and its shape, that in itself emanates, you know, a field. You learn in, in radiesthesia or uh, radiesthesia that any shape will emanate a field, whether it's a shape on paper or if it's 3D, it's even more powerful. And certain shapes, you know, for example, um, you know, in the um, Egyptian tombs, they, they would set up um, certain energies and they discovered that there were some, they weren't too sure what to call them, but pieces of like furniture, but they were odd shaped, like um, just imagine a sphere cut in half and then stacked on top of each other. And they discovered that those spheres stacked together um, would, um, would be amplifiers, okay? They would actually amplify certain frequencies in the non-local. And that was discovered by two French uh, radiesthesies, um, Dr. Belizal and, and Chumery, if you wanna look it up. But anyhow, so physical objects will emanate, you know, uh, a field. And so, um, Gail, correct me if I'm wrong, but you asked me one day to measure how far out um, the egg field goes, I think we measured it to a mile and a half. Now, that doesn't mean it's, it's um, healing energy. It's just the energy emanating from the shape of an egg and the, an egg that is made out of wood versus if you had an egg made out of metal, it would emanate a different type of frequency because it's made of metal, okay? And so uh, apparently some people, as they approach, uh, you know, an egg location, say they can start feeling something, something good or, or whatever. And, and they can because the shape of an egg is natural, it's round, it's soft, it has sacred geometry. And so, yeah, it will emanate, um, you know, a very positive and beneficial type of uh, energy field. Yeah, I've had, um, I have some cleaning ladies that come over to the house and she says, I always tell my sister, I'm going to get, I get to go to that cool energy house. And she said, just pulling up in the driveway, she can feel I have an egg in the house. Of course I have to, right? Um, <laughs> and I have another lady that comes over just so she's a friend of mine. She said she'll enter into the subdivision and my house is about a mile into the subdivision. She said, I can feel the egg energy, right? You know, just, just coming into your subdivision. And of course she's feeling for it. Most people wouldn't even know what they're feeling for. They might just pull into the subdivision and be like, wow, this place feels good. Is it because of the egg energy? You know, who's to say? Um, but I used to have a doctor that worked at the, at the center and she didn't drink enough water during the day. And I remember going into the restroom and she left the water running. And I said, you know, doc, like, really, you left the water running? She's like, I just don't feel well. I said, you're not drinking enough water. You're around, at that time, we had two eggs in the center. So she's around two eggs at the center and she's feeling spacey. She's just feeling like she's detoxing. It's not the same as when you're inside, but when you're around the egg energy, there's still an energy that is somewhat, I'll say, healing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know when I first met you, Gail, I came down to Colorado um, to see the egg for the first time and meet you. And we hadn't yet brought the egg to Canada. And we went to the, we met at your life center where there's three eggs. And it was like, there were multiple people there, first of all, working and hanging out, but it was like, you didn't want to leave. As soon as you got there, it was just like, this must be the place, right? Like, it was like, here it is. and 
you just feel even in you know my own egg center you feel at home you feel like yourself you feel like there's no you, there's no need for ego there's no need for anything blocking you from anyone who walks in the door and the egg owners have these profound connections to their clients because they're stripping off that all that stuff as well when they come in and they feel they can really be vulnerable you know during intake getting ready for setting their intention for the egg because that i guess is emanating throughout the space uh, and beyond um, which i find vastly uh, interesting it's really cool well and uh, we were talking about egypt and you know i mean the pyramids are still standing and i will tell you that there was a tornado that went through the dallas area right after we installed the egg in the dallas area uh, in texas it had destroyed 23 miles of trees and buildings and she took a picture i remember being in the parking lot there was another building in the same parking lot and she's on the fifth floor and that building did not get destroyed but she took a picture the other building was level so you know, I feel like fires and, and, and storms and nature knows, oh, sacred geometry, go around. And then we had the Marshall fires here in Louisville, Texas, or Louisville, Colorado. And I thought, oh my gosh, we have a center in Louisville. And so of course I called, you know, Mary who has her egg in, in Louisville, it's fine. The fire did not just did not mess with that building or that area. Yep. To me, that just my engineering mind, I can't fit that in there, but it's it's a thing. Yep. Oh my gosh, I love that. Um, okay, ladies, I guess what I'd like to ask sort of as the final question, and I think we've touched a little bit on this, but um, what, if any, um, is the most influential element of the egg's efficacy? Is it the color? Is it the shape? Is it the musical frequencies and instruments? Or is it the intention? It's all of the above. <laughs> it's, it's the combination of every single one of those components. And it's the combination of them like fluctuating. Remember, I, um, I use the analogy of like an orchestra, you know, in light and music show, because that's really what it is, except it's playing in nature and it's playing in the quantum level too. And so, you know, it's the entire, um, you know, the entire orchestra of all of these things. Uh, if you were to take one out, then it would be unbalanced and it, and it would be incomplete. Um, and yes, it, even intention, you know, as we discussed, uh, plays a role. It's the whole package. I, I agree. The whole package is what it makes it work so magically and uniquely. And um, there's going to be a documentary that comes out out of UK, David Icke's Iconic Network. Um, and I heard one of the testimonials from the client that was interviewed. She said, it's nothing like anything I've ever experienced before. Yeah. Well, you know, skeptic me, when you first got the egg, you might remember, you're probably still laughing about it. And so I went inside the egg and I go, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna feel anything, you know? I know it works, I know it works, but I probably won't feel anything. And so you shut the door and then I go, oh, I'm claustrophobic, you know, how I, you know, I may wanna leave in, in about three seconds. So you shut the door and immediately, the, no claustrophobia whatsoever. And as you know, you started the lights and the music, it was immediate. I felt it like on the molecular level. I could see visually through my like third eye, like when I do remote viewing or, or the pendulum, I saw my molecules starting to like revive and i remember they were i i saw them like smiling my all of the molecules in my body were smiling and i was so happy in there and then you opened the door and you said well you know you can come out now and i said well no i'm not claustrophobic i can stay for the whole session and you go well you've been in there for 20 minutes you know <laughs> and i didn't realize it because 
there was no more time. So amazing. I, I never get tired of hearing those egg experience stories. Um, they just keep coming and coming and it's a blessing to hear them. Um, thank you ladies so much for spending time talking about all these important topics and sharing your insights and your experience and your research and all of the, the knowledge that you both bring to the table for this. Thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to share this with our audience. Uh, we will have all of the information for Dr. Dominique Sorel uh, attached to any video or audio and of course links for Gail and the Harmonic A. Thank you so much, ladies. Really appreciate you. Well, thank you, Paige. I so much enjoyed, you know, talking with you and with Gail. Uh, it was such a lovely time. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, ladies. Thanks, Paige. Bye.